for me, running a successful business is never standing still. You know, we've got a futures funding platform, you know, for some companies that might be enough. If a trader makes $500 or takes $500 out, then they've got nothing really left to play with, right? So we, you know, we're not going to say you can't do that, but we would say, you know, is that a good idea to the trader? You know, we, we need to encourage them to build their accounts. But equally, if that's what they want to do, as far as we're concerned, it's their money, right? You know, the first 10,000. So by way of introduction, Forrest Townsend here with Funded Trading. I'm joined today by James and Steve from Trade Day. So um, I'll hand over to you gents to introduce yourselves and kind of give us a, a rundown of your roles at, uh, at Trade Day. Uh, hi, Forrest. Thank you. Uh, my name is James Thorpe. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Trade Day. Yeah, and I'm uh, Steve Miley. I'm the uh, COO and also a co-founder. Brilliant. It's a pleasure to have you, uh, have you on with us, gents. I've had a brief sort of run through of um, some of your accolades on your website. I think it's fair to say you've both got pretty impressive resumes in the, in the trading industry over a long period of years. And I'm, I'm curious to know what sort of motivated you both to, to get into the trading industry and base your careers around this. Uh, well, for me, uh, it was a long time. It was a, I think it was a long time ago for both of us. Um, I was at college when the uh, um, Bing Bang happened in the 1980s uh, in, in London, which is a deregulation of the city in 1986. But in 1987, the stock market crashed. And that's when really financial news crossed over from financial media into mainstream media. And uh, it became sort of like, you know, you could read about stock markets and things. In the, in the regular newspapers at the time. And that's really what sort of piqued my interest. And in, from there, you know, I kind of worked through my school studies with the intention of getting into capital markets. So it was, it was a long time ago, but yeah, back in the 80s, I got inspired. I think Wall Street as well probably had something to do with it, the movie. That makes sense. Yeah, and for me, um, I not to similar to James actually, but mine was uh, in the mid 80s, even earlier actually, um, about 84, I think 85 it was. So the UK government sold off all their, um, they privatized all the national industries. So, and the, one of the big first ones that, were, that came to market was British Telecom. They sold British Telecom. And um, even though I was officially underage, um, my, let's say, so my parents made some applications and my, my grandparents made applications. They're all in my name. Well, they're in their names. Um, but, you know, my name as well, they made applications because you could. And um, so that was my first. And it was my savings from doing, you know, Saturday jobs and doing like paper rounds and all that kind of stuff. So I'd like, you know, literally saved like four or five hundred pounds, which is a lot of money back then for a 14, 15 year old. And I put it into the stock market, you know, through these. It was called, it's called stagging. So stagging the um, these privatizations. And you basically, you almost doubled your money. The, the government were kind of giving it away. So I did that with British Telecom, British Gas, and there were uh, the, the British Rail as well, I think the electricity companies. So, you know, I did that and like, turned like 500 into a couple of thousand you know, over the space of a couple of years. So that was my like introduction. And then went on from there through uni, through various jobs. And that's where I met James, actually. And we uh, we met together on the uh, London International Financial Futures Exchange, the Life Floor, which was like the physical futures exchange. And I'll, I'll pass back over to James at that point and he can maybe go on a bit about how we met and then where we went from there. Yeah, it, well, it was, uh, we were both working for Cargill, uh, Cargill Investor Services. Cargill was one of the world's largest private uh, privately com private companies and um, and they, they are involved in a lot of the world's production of food. Uh, and agriculture so um, they had their own brokerage to um, hedge their exposure in commodities and then um, we ended up working for Cargo Investor Services the brokerage group that's where I met Steve in 90 I think it was 1992 wasn't it Steve yeah and then um, and then from there yeah like kind of the rest is history I'm sure we'll cover some of it in this in this call but uh, yeah I, I worked for them for a couple of years before I started trading in 94. Lovely Lovely, humble beginnings. No, it's, it's nice to see, um, you know, a, a bit of experience. I know, well, you, you've probably seen it yourself, prop firms popping up here, there and everywhere with with a new logo every week. And you kind of wonder who's actually behind these and, you know, is, is there any institutional experience at all? Um, yeah. But I think it's clear to see that you've, you've both got a wealth of, which is which is really nice. Um, so if we move that forward then to, to the actual inception of Trade Day, obviously you both have very, very successful careers in the space. 
at some point you decided to obviously go out on your own, create Trade Day and, and move forward from there. So how did how did that come together? Um, so, yeah, my, 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 my experience in, in, you know, my career experience is I was a trader for 15 years. I'd worked for an exchange for a couple of years. But for the really the sort of 10, 2010 to around 2020, uh, I'd been managing professional trading groups, you know, around the world. I actually, I'd lived in, in Shanghai, Europe and, um, and Africa before moving to the US in 2016. So I'd been ma- managing professional trading groups at a senior level. And um, when 2020 rolled in, uh, rolled around um, and COVID sort of, sort of came to town, I lost my job. I was working for a European company that was uh, trying to establish a US footprint. And they decided to pull that investment, like a, a lot of companies had to make very difficult decisions, obviously, when, when COVID first hit. And so I found myself without a job and, you know, I wanted to do something that, um, oh yeah, I had nothing but time on my hands. So I thought, yeah, I'll start my own company. Um, and then, you know, I wanted to do something that married my experience of um, building professional trading groups and, and being a trader for 15 years um, with, you know, something that I would align with what I saw with the emerging trends at the time, which were more people at home, uh, more people with time on their hands, more people looking for opportunity. Um, you know, I wasn't quite prepared for the the huge trend in retail trading that was about to explode, uh, particularly as, you know, a lot of sports betting found its way into financial markets. Because if you remember in 2020, there were no sports sports on and there's just a huge interest in retail trading as, as in more people at home looking for opportunity um so i was looking around the space and i came across like this center funded or online prop trading space and um at the time there were only a few players in in the market or certainly a few dominant players in the market and you know I, I kind of looked at it and i thought you know how could i do this differently you know what what what, what could we do that would bring value to the space. And, um, you know, I thought, well, what I would do is I'd lean on my institutional background and, and, and my network and, and try and deliver a more professional experience to the retail trader at home. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and part of that was thinking, right, one of the things I wanted to do was bring in some institutional grade research. So as a trader sitting in a trading room every morning, you have a daily morning meeting where the chief analyst runs through what happens overnight, what's expected the day ahead. Um, you'll have some research sheets in front of you, some technical analysis sheets, all produced by the research department. And at the time, Steve was um, running, uh, owned and uh, running the market chartist group. So I reached out to Steve and said, hey, Steve, you know, would you mind providing research to this, uh, this trading group I'm going to start trade day? And, you know, he had a look and said, yeah, of course, I'd ha- love to help you out. Um, but really sort of liked the idea of what we were doing, um, you know, as a company and said, you know, I'd really like to come on board and be part of it. So, you know, we, we built it together and, uh, and then launched, uh, I think it was November 21, right, Steve? Yep. November 21. Yeah. 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 Lovely. No, that makes sense. Okay. Brilliant. And and you're completely right in, in what you were seeing in, in the market, I guess, I think maybe exploited by COVID. I, I'm not sure, but there's certainly been a, a substantial boom as there in retail trading activity and yeah. um, um i was looking at some of the numbers for one of the sort of leading um forex prop firms not too long ago i think they're you know one of the deloitte fast growing companies now and it's you know it seems to really come to a head which is obviously great for retail traders there's a lot more opportunity for for us folks than ever before if we're you know not pursuing a an institutional you know career i guess so yeah. Yeah, great to see okay um, so let's move on then to trade day and the the business model you you guys operate with. I know you're you're looking at doing things differently to what you were seeing in the space when you came in. Um, so give us a flavour of the business model that you guys have, and I guess how it supports the you know the, the operations of trade day. Yeah, so um, I'll take that one if that's okay. So yeah, I mean as, as James said there, right? You know the, the you're know, part of the reason how I became involved, and my background has been in. More in more in the on the research side. So having um, worked together as brokers um, and been a broker up until the end of the last century, into like ninety nine two thousand, I kind of segued into research and and I've been using technical analysis anyway as part of my my broking. Um, but then I actually became a technical analyst at Merrill Lynch Bank of America. Then went across to Credit Suisse. I was a director of Credit Suisse and ran their technical analysis department. And as James kind of alluded to there, you know 
what we were really wanted to bring to this space was, and we felt that even you know back then you know as I, as, as you just said there um, for us has exploded really in in the last two three years. But even with the fewer um, you know, um, uh, companies that were in the space at the time, there was kind of a, a, a split between those who were trying to do it you know from a more professional standpoint and those who were just kind of it was quick and fast and you know and a little bit cheap and easier right and and there's a place for all of that you know that's no you know dis, uh, you know dis, no disparity against uh, those companies but then um what we also spelled that there was nothing really at the very top end you know kind of stuff and and that's what james you know said there you know to actually bring a lot of this professionalism um you know we've got like 60 you know showing out you know we've We've already shown our ages, right? We've got like over 60, getting on, it's coming up to 70 years now between the two of us experience. Oh, yeah. And, um, and you know, to bring some of that, you know, from myself, from all the research side, I'm a qualified counselor as well. So to bring it from the research and the psychological side, and then James, you know, has, has managed literally hundreds, if not thousands of traders um, all over the planet, you know, um, and, you know, built up the whole of, the, of a of a Chinese um, uh, prop trading company, professional, one of the biggest prop trading companies in the world, in fact. So um, so we decided to bring all that together. And that's what we kind of really launched with. And that is our that is our business model, how we stand apart, you know, whether it's a USP or just an SP. Right. But how we try and stand apart are on two, two real pillars. And one of those pillars is all on that education, all of the resources we bring. So we bring. Um, a squawk service. So all of our members have a squawk service available. So they're constantly, it's a 24 hour squawk service that runs Monday through Friday. We bring psychological and risk management webinars from Steve Ward. He's one of the um, most renowned uh, professional trading coaches in the world. He works for some of the biggest hedge funds in the world. He worked with the British Olympic team um, in the run into 2012. So this guy really knows his stuff. Um, and then we offer mentoring. Um, so if you're on our higher tiers, you get mentored by James and I. You get one session a month with James or I um, to talk about risk management or technical analysis, strategy, psychology of trading emotions, fundamental analysis, whatever it might be, because we have all those skill sets. And then we move on. Um, we put up all that institutional grade research. I still produce um, reports for um, my my clients uh, as market chartists. So I have institutional clients who pay for that research and we give a similar research um, to our retail clients who are slightly different because obviously they have different needs. Um, and then on top of that, we also have a whole host of educational resources as well. So we have from the very, very basic, you know, you know, from technical analysis, you know, what is a chart kind of stuff, right the way up to more um, in-depth stuff on the psychology side um, and on risk management. So we have a whole gambit of educational resources. So we wanted to bring all of that um, and then a daily webinar, which I've just done, actually. So um, we do a, a daily webinar Monday through Friday. Uh, we'll be giving insight into the start of the US day. You know, what's been going on, what's happened, what's coming up, what needs to be focused on. So all of that. And that is pretty much replicating what you get, as James already said, you know, what you're getting in a, a prop trading company. You know, I've worked in investment banks for over 20 years. You know, that's what you get at the morning meetings, uh, uh, an investment bank. Those are the resources that are available. So we wanted to bring all of that. So that's one pillar. The second pillar. And that we believe kind of stand get us to stand apart is that we were very passionate that we were not doing this as I do believe some of our competitors are, um, and I'm not going to point any fingers, but um, to not just get people to churn through people and just get them onto multiple challenges and basically failing those challenges. We genuinely want to find traders. You know that was what Trade Day was set up to do. And if you speak to any of our members or you look on our Trustpilot reviews and Google reviews, and I do appreciate I'm going on here, but very passionate about this part, and I think it's really important to get this over, is that we put traders into a live account when they pass. They do not go into a simulation account, right? Now, there may be a change in that, and James is going to talk a bit about that later on, but we're going to keep that as a core of what we do. You get live trading, live capital, real money. That means that every trader that passes with us gets to have a one-to-one with us at least one a one-to-one one-to-one as many as they maybe need within reason um because we want them to succeed at that point if they lose money at that point we lose money it's our real capital coming out of trade day and ultimately from james and i's pockets right it's real money real dollars okay where if you're in a sim account then it's actually in the interest of the company that you fail at that point, because at that point they're writing the check. Okay. When it's in, it's in the interest of trade day 
to have all of our traders succeed. And it is a difficult challenge and it is um, difficult for the trader and it's difficult to us, but it's something we're really passionate about. And I say, I know I've gone on a bit, but I really want to stress that, you know, because, and even though we're going to do a fork in that, and James is going to talk about about that um, hopefully a bit later um, to give traders options, but we're not going to get get rid of that. That's kind of at the core of our business model, so the core of our belief system. Um, and, you know, alongside the education, it's what really, you know, I think makes that trade day stand apart. No, I completely hear you. I think your your passion really comes af- uh, comes across there, Steve. I think, uh, like you say, you, you, you know, providing the sort of uh, I know it's slightly varied, as you say, but sort of that institutional feel and the the information at your fingertips that most retail traders don't have access to um, unless they go get that themselves. Um, you know, you, you are giving the tools to succeed, and obviously, your your mission, as you say, is is to find profitable traders. That's how you're you're, you're going to make your you know drive revenues, etc. And you're not in the in the market of uh, just offering sim accounts and hoping they fail and uh, and cashing the checks like you say. So no, really good to see. Really, really good to see. I'd say that really sets you apart from yeah, a, a scary amount of the industry for sure. Um, speaking of that, let's let's talk about the risks then. So I mean, I've been in the space um, yeah pre COVID. I've seen the rise and fall of many uh, retail prop firm at this point. You know, I can name on my hand five or six that have gone under and, you know, traders with funded accounts no longer have access to that capital, of course. So how do you manage risk at trade day? Um, you know, ha- how is it all funded? I-, I believe you said there it's pretty much your own skin in the game from your pockets. But, you know, I- elaborate on that for us. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's a good point that you make for us because, you, know, you touched on it earlier. There seems to be a wealth of competition in the space, and it you know not all of it, but some of that competition it's questionable about their experience. And I just don't think that well, you know those that have suffered in the past haven't had an appreciation for risk and how to manage risk correctly. You know, first of all, the, the trading group needs to be well funded, right? And, and Steve and I have been very fortunate enough. So we've had you know pretty successful careers throughout our lives um, uh, that has afforded us the ability to fund a trading group. So we have a separate trading group built up, a proprietary trading group that's funded by us. Um, and then we have margin financing lines in place um, for um, traders that will, may eventually outgrow our capital, so to speak, or if we become too big that we can't you know afford to fund it ourselves. So like the financing's there, but the most important thing, I think, when you're building a trading group, and I've built trading groups all over the world, is the infrastructure and making sure the infrastructure is the best it can be and the most stable it can be. You know, and one of those reasons is why in the future space we chose a trade debate because it runs on the CQG data feed and that is much more stable than um, one of the other main data feeds that a lot of other trading platforms use. So, you know, we make sure our infrastructure is safe, you know, we, we make sure we're well capitalized. And thirdly, it's just based on our experience, you know, and Steve and I and our head of trading and um, and we have a lady called Terra as well, very, very experienced in trading and understand, you know, what we're looking for, what are the pitfalls and things like that. And to make sure that, um, you know, our risk is well managed at all times. But, you know, it's, it, it's just a good question. We do see, uh, you know, not just in our sim to funded space, but in a lot of proprietary trading groups over time, many companies have come and gone. And, you know, it's always a risk management issue that um, eventually causes the demise of a company. So, you know, it's something that's at the forefront of our minds. We keep our eye on it very, very, very closely. And we just make sure we're well funded. I mean, no, very reassuring, very reassuring indeed. So let's move away then. Let's let's put myself in the in the shoes of a retail trader. Let's say I'm um, I'm looking to obtain funding. I want to you know start sort of taking this a bit more seriously from taking the odd trade here and there and, and really get some skin in the game with trade day. You know what, what kind of qualifications, experience would you say I need as a retail trader to get through your doors, to start working with you, to take on some capital? The easy answer for me is to say, oh, we'll take everyone. Everyone can come. You know, just you know, sign up, right? Um, but again, you know, you can see hopefully already with our honesty and transparency, I would strongly advise against someone who is very, very new to trading to come and take an evaluation challenge. 
Um, you know, you really already need a strategy of some sort in place. You need some kind of education in place. Now we have, you know, I don't want to repeat myself too much, but we have a wealth of educational resources from from the bottom through to, I would say, an intermediate to lightly advanced. It's not super advanced kind of level. So we have that in place. Um, so if you, if you, there are some nuances around, so an example would be a lot of people you mentioned earlier on the Forex prop companies a lot of people come across from that space so there are nuances with futures i mean the markets the markets whether you're trading as s p cfd or you're actually trading the s p future itself you know they're, they're the same thing if you know how to trade one you can trade the other but there are some nuances you maybe need to know about futures that you know with the rollover the expiry the most liquid month these kind of things right so we kind of provide some education on that so to lift you to the right levels within this space but I would strongly suggest that no one should come on one of these challenges like with zero experience. You know, go and open a demo account with a CFD broker or a futures broker, practice, trade, get a strategy going first. You, why come and learn how to trade and lose money as you go would be my answer. Now, there is a step that has to be taken that you have to then try and make some money. Now, for us, you know, we would encourage and I would suggest that it's probably a better way to have some skin in the game, but not all your skin in the game, right? To so come to a prop trading company. And, you know, dare I say it, you know, we've had discussions with within with people within the industry about this. You know, there's a good chance that the actual old-fashioned Forex, Forex broker, CFD brokers could get cannibalized by the prop firms because, you know, why would you go and put $5,000 of your own money in an account and lose it when you could just come to a prop firm, you know, put a few hundred dollars in, and if you're successful, trade their money instead, right? If you're going to be decent at what you do. So, you know, the honest answer is, I think you should have some kind of strategy in place. But then to go and test it in the live market, uh, you know, if you've traded before for us, you'll know this, right? If you go on demo, you play around on demo, every, the amount of people I've heard say, oh, I've, I've been so successful in demo. I've, I turned, you know, I had a 50,000 account and turned into 20 million or whatever it is, right? And then they put them, then they go think, okay, I put 10 grand into it or five grand or a thousand or whatever they can afford into a trading account of their own money. And boom, it's gone before you know it. Right. And then, and then, and then it becomes addictive and then they're chasing the funds. You know, so I'd say we're a good kind of entry point for someone who's already got established. And we do provide all those resources to repeat myself, you know, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, squawk webinars, daily webinars. We provide all of that to nurture you and take you to another, from a level of, understanding to better understanding but i think you need that initial education understanding and just to do a couple of boring bits there are some prohibited countries that we can't take people from and you obviously have to be over 18 years old as well um but outside of that you know we have people from all over the world we see more and more ladies trading which we certainly welcome i think personally believe and females make better traders than men because they've got less ego generally um and we tend to see good results from from the lady traders the female traders that we have coming uh, on board and we have people from all over the world you know as long as they're not from those prohibited countries we, we welcome all of them and and all ages as well there's not there's no um age to be able to do it there's no demographic you know blue collar white collar race creed color it doesn't matter you know male female 18 years old through to we have a guy like a semi we've had a guy we've been in conversation with he's like way into i think his 80s and he's just learned trading in the last few years successful businessman and wants to do it because he enjoys it. he's in a retirement home in florida wants to do it to have fun right so we have all age groups and um yeah but i think you do need that kind of base at first before to before you come to to join a prop trading firm yeah okay noted no i think it really shows your your transparency there that you would you would dissuade folks with no experience from from you know coming in with, without that base level of knowledge i think that's yeah. great to see I think, um, in, in my personal opinion, the sort of risk framework that a prop firm kind of instills in you, you know, you have these limits in terms of drawdown or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, I, I think that does help you learn trading to a, to a better degree. You know, like, like you say, Steve, I could go on a demo account now, as I'm sure you, you both could. We could go along on something, forget about it for four months, no stop loss. And I'm sure we'd make, you know, we yeah. profitable traders on the, on the demo books. But yeah. I think having that risk framework instilled in you because you don't have a choice to to some degree i think that does make you a better trader and i think does speed up the learning curve for sure yeah yeah agreed agreed brilliant okay so let's say um you know i, I want to sign up with you I, i'm i'm really considering it what what's the kind of process of you know a to z how do i get funding with you what hoops do i jump through for lack of a better phrase 
I, I can lead off with that one. So um, yeah. the we you know we we try and keep it really simple at trade day. Um, like a lot of proprietary trading groups, we have a trading drawdown. Okay, and and ours we are base on end of day balances. So um, you know it, it, if you if you make money in the morning and lose it in the afternoon, you know it's not punitive trading drawdown. That's tracking your highest account balance during the day. It's at the end of the day where you settle. We move our trading drawdown. So that's like kind of like that. That's the that's I would say the, the main reason why most people sort of fail to sort of make progress on the evaluations they get the trading drawdown. And then we have a couple of other rules around that. One is that we are a day trading firm only. Um, this goes back to the heart of the question that you talked about earlier in terms of risk management. You cannot manage the risk. When you put, we you know we're putting traders in the live markets, as Steve said. So when somebody's funded with us, if they have an open position when the market's closed, it is impossible to risk manage that position. If somebody went in to the weekend long uh, the Nasdaq or the S and P, and let's say the situation in Ukraine escalated, God forbid, you know, on Monday morning that market could open significantly against them and, and you know and cause uncontrollable losses. So, you know, we, we have um, um, a trading drawdown and uh, the, you can only day trade, right? No positions overnight. And then the final one is um, permitted products. So we uh, connect to the CME groups worth, uh, sorry, the CME groups futures exchange. Um, and within that futures exchange is a whole broad spread of products. But we do, um, there are a handful of products we don't allow typically very high margin products or very illiquid products that are difficult for the trader to trade. Um, what we do see is most people come onto the platform and trade stock indexes um, with a proportion making up, but then the rest will be oil, gold, uh, and treasuries. And we've just got a couple of commodity traders, but the vast majority trade stock indexes. So like those are our three rules. And in order to guarantee funding, you have to achieve our three objectives. One of them is a profit target. Uh, the second one is to achieve that profit target in a consistent way. And the third one is trade for a minimum of 10 days, right? So we don't want to see people come on, uh, buy three NASDAQ and get lucky when the market rallies 3% on the day, make the profit target and say, hey, fund me. You know, you haven't really shown us anything about your ability to trade. Um, all you've shown us really is your ability to get lucky on one trade. So, you know, that's where the consistency rule comes in and trading for a minimum of 10 days. Um, I won't go into how we calculate the consistency rule because it, it, you know, it just it'll just take a little bit of time. But essentially, um, what we're trying to do is to um, you know have a reflection that you are capable of making risk-adjusted returns. That you know you can come in, you can be consistent in your trading rather than huge gambles and huge swings. Yeah, you know, that's not the sort of trading we're looking to back. So um, those are the sort of the three rules and the three objectives. Um, you know, pass those objectives without touching the without breaking a rule, and we guarantee funding you. Um, the only other set of rules um, that um, we require traders to adhere to are the exchange rules. Now, w when we fund somebody, we require them to take a small course that we put together explaining prohibited trade practices as laid out by the exchange. And um, the things like order splitting and spoofing the market, layering the market, They're basically, you know, um, rules around price manipulation, um, more or less. And it's illegal to do that, basically. If you're caught doing that at the exchange, you can be subject to fines. Um, you know, there have been instances where the regulators stepped in, investigated, and people have gone to prison. <laughs> you know, we don't want that. So uh, we have a course that educates the traders in these prohibited trade practices, it's very rare for a retail trader to fall foul of those laws. Um, um, but um, you know, nevertheless, we want to avoid any unintended breaches of those rules. So we have that course, ask them to go through that course, and um, and and then when they've completed that course, um, you know, we're happy to put them in the live funded markets. So really, just trying to protect themselves from themselves. So so yeah, that's the structure. I'm with it. Okay, brilliant. Sounds very robust. I, I like the uh, the mandatory training you must go through to you know avoid getting slapped wrists. I think that's yeah, something I don't see a lot of. So no, very good. Okay, 
Um, so let's talk less about the risks then and the rules and more about the, the benefits. Obviously, it's, you know, as, as we've touched on already, a competitive market from a, from a prop firm point of view. There's a lot of firms that traders can choose to work with now. So, I mean, we've touched on some of the key benefits of, of working with Trade Day from obviously the, the wealth, educational materials, um, uh, and the live capital, um, for example. But um, may, maybe one for, for you, Steve. So talk us through um some of the main benefits in, in your opinion of you know what why trade day yeah so i mean without you know wanting to stay like a stuck record ben you've obviously mentioned them there as well i mean we those two pillars are key for us and i'm not going to go through it all again but just to you know mention briefly it is you know live in the real markets we are aligned with traders when they get funded we're willing them to succeed we're trying to you know educate them to succeed and before that, all those resources, you know, anyone can come along, sign up for a 14-day free trial. They get entrance to our back end and they can then just see what the members, all the members see. And they can see all that that wealth of education and the school service and, you know, all of all the webinars and et cetera, et cetera. So I won't, you know, labor on that too much, but, you know, I have done it a little bit there anyway. Um, but, you know, I'd say there's some a few other points that are kind of key. Um so we don't necessarily provide as many platforms as some of our competitors, but we do have our Trade of Eight is our broker. So the Trade of Eight platform, um, obviously they recently um, went through a, a merger with a Ninja Trader. So Ninja Trader is also available. Plus Trading View is um, available to integrate. And then depending on where you are in the journey, funded traders also get the opportunity to use uh, Sierra charts as well, but not on the, I just must stress, not on the evaluation uh, challenge. Um, and then on top of that, we have some of our, you know, not necessarily USPs, but certainly SPs. Uh, we have no withdrawal restrictions whatsoever. Um, well, there is a withdrawal restriction in that if you withdraw less than 500 bucks, James, is that correct? Yes, yeah. 500 bucks, you have to, we ask them to pay the bank fee rather than us pay the bank fee. But if it's over $500, um, uh, we pay the bank fees. Other than that, they can withdraw. Our funded traders can withdraw at any time, as much as they want, whenever they want, right? There are no further hurdles to jump through. And that's that's a product of them being live in the real market. It's real money. The profits are there to be taken. Now, if a trader makes $500 and takes $500 out, then they've got nothing really left to play with, right? So we, you know, we're not going to say you can't do that, but we would say, you know, is that a good idea to the trader? You know, we, we need to encourage them to build their accounts. But equally, if that's what they want to do, as far as we're concerned, it's their money, right? You know, the first $10,000 they get to keep, after that, it's a 90-10 split in their favor. Um, so no withdrawal restrictions. There. And a lot of our competitors, there are further hoops to jump through because they're in that live SIM environment. You know, whether it's, you know, time, they have to wait a certain amount of time, whether there's a restriction on the amounts they can take over the different times. There's all sorts of convoluted rules. I'm not going to go into their rules. Our rules are super simple. Take the money if you make the money. That's it. You know, it's yours to keep if you want it. Um, so that's one big one. No activation fee. Now, there is a fee of $122 per month because you're a professional, deemed a professional trader when you're trading with Trade Day. So we can't get away from that. You don't pay that to Trade Day. You pay that direct to the broker and then onto the exchange. But um, there's no activation fee. So some of our competitors, even when you're in a sim environment, they, they ask you to pay to activate your funded account, even though the funded account is still in SIM. I mean, you know, why are they doing that? Well, there's no cost to them. I know why they're doing it because it's, you know, you're funded and you're on the account, right? So you've got to pay. <laughs> Who's not going to pay the money to get their funded account having gone through the, the challenge? So we don't have an activation fee, but there is this other fee, but that doesn't come to trade date. Um, as James mentioned there on our drawdowns, there's an end of day drawdown calculation, which is to the benefit of the trader. What it means is then if you make money within the day and then lose that within the day, you're not penalized for that. Where if you have an intraday um, a drawdown calculation, if you make money, the, the drawdown moves up with you and you lose it. You could be net net zero on the day and you end up potentially blowing the account, even though you've actually not made or lost any money. You can actually make money on the day and still get um, fail the evaluation. So we have an end of day drawdown calculation. And then we also have a scaling plans in place for our funded traders. So if you graduate from whichever of our tiers that it might be, 
that tier is then mirrored into a funded account. So you get that drawdown into a funded account. But then as you grow the account, and if you leave money in the account, you leave capital in the account and grow the account from 5000 to $10,000 to $20,000, we have a scaling plan so the traders can continue to grow the account and trade bigger size as they allow their account to grow. So those are just some of the things in here, I think, that are you know added benefits of working uh, with Trade Day. Lovely. I really like the uh, the, the simple... Uh... The uh, s- simple withdrawal um, process. So I've um, I've worked with a few firms in my time and uh, taken the odd withdrawal. And uh, yeah, it's not the uh, not the easiest process for the most part. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> my what name it had to be a specific day of the month, and it had to meet all these criteria. So I, had to yeah. I can't it. imagine who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So let's. Um, if you're happy to do so, I'd like to take a sort of look under the under the hood or under the bonnet, as it as it were. Some of the sort of challenges you face, whether it's um, you know from from a trade day perspective, the challenges you face either in the industry, internally, operationally, what are you looking at as being your kind of biggest challenges at the moment? That's a that's a pretty broad question, you know. I think um, Forrest, had I known just the sheer amount of work it would take to you know, build, launch, you know, grow, manage, uh, you know, an online prop trading group particularly in the environment of, you know, huge amounts of competition, you know, I probably would have found something else to do. So, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of challenges, right? Um, I think, you know, from a micro level, let's start there and work, work up from a micro level for, for trade day. I think one of the biggest challenges facing us, um, you know, is that Steve mentioned there that, um, you know, has, has emphasized that we're funding traders in the live market, right? And that's great. That's what we wanted to do. That's what I've done for the last, well, I started as a funded trader in 1994. So we we'll put money in a trading account for me to trade and I traded that. And then, um, you know, in 2010, when I started managing proprietary trading groups, that's what we did, you know, albeit slightly differently. We went to universities, hired people, we'd bring them in teach them how to trade, put money in a trading account for them and see how they performed. Um, so, you know, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to find good traders. With that comes some, um, I don't want to say disadvantages because it's, you know, if I, was a, if I was looking for funding, why would you choose to be anywhere else where you're not aligned with the group once you're funded, right? They come to us, we fund them, you're aligned with us, more money you make, the more money we make. If you lose money, we lose money, right? If you're in a sim payout account, it's completely the opposite. Um, but one of the advantages, if you like, of being in a sim payout account is you don't have to pay professional market data feed fee that Steve just mentioned of $122 a month. So what happens is when you're funded and trading somebody else's money on the CME group, through their eyes, you're classified as a professional trader. So now there's a monthly professional market data fee of $122 a month. And, you know, some traders don't like that. You know, some people, if you think about the reason why we exist as a, as a company or as an industry is a lot of people are underfunded out there and they're looking to get their trading funded. Uh, so they want to try and avoid, you know, like a, a, any additional costs. So we run into that. We get feedback from some traders saying, you know, hey, I'd really love to join Trade Day, but if I get funded, I don't want to pay the $122 a month. Um, we've had issues with some jurisdictions uh, being unable to trade um, live funded uh, prop trade funds um, and, and said that we would like to join Trade Day. And if it was a SIM um, payout account, we'd be able to join you. But, you know, our current country's law um, regulator forbids us from trading live markets. So that was another sort of challenge that we kind of run into having this immediate step to live funding. And the third one we have is, um, you know, it's not a risk management issue. I, I would say it's more of a trader issue where there's this huge drop off in performance from SIM to funded. Now, some of that is to do with the psychological challenges of going trading from a, a, a simulated account to a live or to a payout account, that pressure of now trading with money. Some of it is to do with sort of like structural changes to the market itself. So the simulated fill algorithm is slightly different to the live fill algorithm. It's just the way, it's not meant, not designed to be that way, but there are 
some, you know, sometimes you get granted more generous fills than the sim out. So we see this drop off in performance. So Steve and I have been discussing, you know, to, to sort of remedy that, Steve and I have been discussing um, what we can do to, you know, ease traders in to trade in the live market uh, and give those that can't trade live funds, as I mentioned, um, some countries, their, their local regulation forbids them, forbids them from being able to trade live funds, give them the opportunity to join trade day. <clears throat> so if we are thinking about, and in the middle of sort of developing, we haven't put it in, 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 uh, into production yet, um, a, a, a fork after you follow the evaluation challenge. So those that want live uh, funding can go into live funding, but those that want to go into a sim payout situation, they can choose that option too. And obviously the benefits there will be no professional market data fee. We can get you up and running instantly as opposed to having to go through the opening account process with our broker on this side. <clears throat> so we're, we're in the middle of, um, a, you know, sort of like working through that process. Is this something that we want to do? You know, we're going to beta test it and then potentially roll out that before. So that's kind of like one of our sort of micro challenges uh, for, for trade out. Macro challenges you know, it's just like really the broader industry. Um, you know, I think that it's a um, become very, very competitive. As I as I said at the top of the interview, um, when I first set out in 2020, there were just a handful of players in the market. And now, like you say, it feels like there's a handful of players popping up every week. Um, you know, so there is, you know, a huge level of competition and that's forcing pressure on prices. It seems to be a bit of a race. I don't say race to the bottom on prices, but people are trying to undercut each other. And, you know, we look at that and it kind of, you know, on the one hand, it's a little frustrating. Margins get compressed. Um, it will plateau at some point because at some point it's just not going to be worth, you know, being in business, doing it for everybody. So I expect that to, to end soon. Um, but on the other hand, it's a bit like, well, if that's all you've got to offer is being a bit cheaper or, you know, allegedly being a bit faster to funding, then, you know, have at it. Good luck. You know, we, we try to separate ourselves out as Steve's touched on a, a couple of times throughout this interview, by giving a different experience, you know, and we, we're not the cheapest, but we want to be the best, you know, and if you really want to be aligned with the people that are funding you and you want to, um, you know, take or use the resources that we provide to help you find your edge in the markets, then, you know, trade days the home for you. And hopefully people see, you know, that that's worth, you know, like an extra few bucks a month, uh, over and above, you know, sort of a cheap competitor who's just kind of like in it to sort of, you know, try and get as many evaluations as they can. So, you know, that that that's kind of like the broader challenges for us, I think, is like, you know, the, the, the general competition in the industry. And on a, on a micro level, you know, how do we evolve our product to meet the expectations of the traders in the marketplace when they're used to doing things a certain way? Yep, I'm with you. Very interesting. I, I like your comment there about the, I know you weren't saying a race to the bottom, but I think it, like like you say, if you're only USP is that you're slightly cheaper than than someone else. There's only so far that can go before yeah. like you say is there's nothing in it for the firm anymore, and you know a few bad months, and they're they're probably wiped away. So, um, no, very interesting. I, I was going to to ask about the sort of USPs or SPs um, of, of trade day, but I think we've covered them pretty perfectly already in terms of the. You know the the live capital, the low withdrawal restrictions, and the the in depth research that traders have access to, and the live score, etc. So I won't um I, I won't cover that again. But seeing as you were talking on a more sort of macro level about the industry um uh, as a whole, I think it'd be really interesting to um to to start looking at sort of the longevity and future success of of the firm and what you've got plans. So I mean, yeah. what what steps are you taking um to ensure that the trade days longevity and future successes is, is going to be there if we got you know i i, I imagine you're, you're two smart chaps i'm sure you've got everything sort of planned out <laughs> well yeah i mean yeah. it's interesting actually for us that you asked that question and, and say so i'm sure you got everything planned out you know I, I remember um when i was managing mercury derivatives which you know at the time was one of the world's largest day trading groups we were trading something like 280 million contracts a year um of course, 11 offices. The guy that owns that, Guidon Hirschton, um, industry legend, uh, you know, made millions and millions trading and then, you know, a magnitude more running, owning clearing firms and, and proprietary trading groups. Um, he would get asked this question 
you know, when we would go around and speak to the different managers and branches that, and, and trading groups that we were running and owning. And um, he would say, you know, he would always say, they would, people would say, you know, what's, what's the five-year plan? And he would just kind of look at them and say, you tell me, you know. Uh, and I was uh, looking at him and say, you don't know where we're going in five years. Um, but I think the point was he would go on to explain is, you know, it's very difficult to sort of say, hey, we're going to do X, Y, Z, and this is going to happen, blah, blah, blah. You have to be much more reactive to the marketplace. And, um, you know, and, you know, while Steve and I, you know, we do have some ideas about what we want to do with Trade Day. You know, we're also being kind of, you know, being somewhat reactive to 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 what's happening. So, like one thing that we've started to hear uh, potentially uh, might be happening is there might be some regulation. Um, you know, at the moment, online private trading is an unregulated industry, uh, and there may be some regulation coming down the pipe. You know, if there is, we welcome that. We, um, you know, both from regulated institutions, so we understand the challenges of regulation. Um, I think for the the trader or the user, um, you know, what does that mean? Well, it means a safer marketplace. Uh, unfortunately, it might mean slightly higher prices because the costs of running a regulated institution are much higher. You know, someone has to bear that cost, but it will mean a safer marketplace for you, and it should mean you know washing out of the weaker hands in the industry. Who don't you know how understand you know how to run a regulated business or um, you know don't have the appetite to to conform to sort of any regulators' wishes. So you know that that's kind of like one thing we've got our eye on. Um, you know, for me, running a successful business is never standing still. You know, we've got a futures funding platform. You know, for some companies that might be enough. You know, for us, it's like, okay, what's next for trade day? What's next for trade day? We need to evolve. So, you know, I said that, you know, we don't have a five-year plan. You know, it's not kind of written in stone. You know, it, it fluctuates and changes depending on the market, you know, requirements and stuff. But we we have an idea about, you know, broadening our product offering. Right, right now, we connect to the CME Group's Futures Exchange. You know, what's next for us is it, FX, is it CFDs, is it equities, is it crypto, or is it other exchanges around the world that we connect to? Is it other trading platforms? You know, all these things are on the agenda, you know, without sort of tipping our hat to the competition, um, you know, where we, you know, we're not going to let everybody know what, we're, what we've got planned, but, you know, we're constantly examining, you know, what's next for us, what's the expectation of the trader, where is the demand in the asset classes, and, uh, you know, and how can we improve, you know, what we're offering to the marketplace at the same time, continuing to evolve what we have with trade day, right? You know, we have all our education resources and our, our market score and, you know, and our daily research and meetings. You know, is there more we can do to enhance, you know, what we have? You know, right now we don't have a Discord server. That's in the pipeline, you know. In the next few months, we're going to have a Discord server for example. So there's lots of little things happening to help enhance what we have, make sure we're ahead of the competition always, make sure that people, you know, we are the destination for the trader looking for funding. And and at the same time, thinking ahead, like what bigger markets can we can we grow and capture? Yeah, and can I just add a couple of little bits in there as well, just, you know, to, to carry on on that, you know, just, you know, one of the big things we're looking at um, potentially, and it's not giving too much away really, is just to say, you know, we are very much focused on the English language, right? You know, it's the language we speak. It's the language of finance. Um, but equally, there are many, many people around the world speaking different languages. So um, language offer offerings is certainly something that's going to be, you know, is you know fairly high on our agenda. Um, and obviously that needs full support. So it's not a matter of just translating your website. You know, anyone can do that, right? But then there's all the support that comes with that as well. So we want to ensure, you know, with the quality and the professionalism that we bring, that we give full support as well to anyone speaking those languages. So, you know, that's, you know, something else that's, you know, put in, in pipeline. And then, James, just go back to the micro stuff. You know, we've just instigated. Um, so we're starting to share our the results of our successful traders um, to our other traders, right? And it was, you know, they loved it. The, you know, our, our traders, you know, it, it's proprietary data anyway for us. So we own that data as it were, but we're not obviously putting names on it either. But then it gives a real insight. So this is how the guys who are doing it well do it, you know, that kind of stuff. We may even add in there, but you have to be a bit careful with this one, right? 
this is the way not to do it, right? <laughs> but, um, but we're certainly showing people like this is what a successful and it doesn't, you know, all these strategies look very different. We're not actually giving their strategies away. We're just showing you, you know, when they enter trades, what their timelines were, what their overall um, stats are looking like. So yeah, things like that, you know, James has already touched on it, you know, to continue to evolve that education, all the tools that are available, journaling tools, all that kind of stuff, all in the pipeline, bigger picture of the languages. And then, as James said, they're the cross-border stuff as well. Um, and then to be prepared for, for the for the ultimate, you know, as, as, as James said there, you know, if, if regulation comes, we're on the right side. Now, we know we're on the right side of that regulation, but then to, to actually see that as a benefit to Trade Day, where I, I think other companies will see it as a, as a challenge. I'm with you. It seems like a lot of your your focus, I know, as, as you say, it's not sort of concrete yet, but is is around providing that better experience for traders um, yeah. rather than trying to etch more money out of said traders, which I think is is great to see. Um, and I'm interested on this on this regulation piece because I've, I've been hearing rumblings for a long time now that that's where the industry is going and, you know, there's it, it, it can't stay as it is with so many, um, for lack of a better phrase, pirates um, here in the sector, as I'm sure you've seen. Um Let's talk about the the future then. So you you see regulation coming shortly? Is this a, a long term thing? How what's your? I assume you've got your ear to the ground much more than I. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I actually have no insight, Forrest, into um, if it is you know definitively coming. It's just something that we're preparing for just in case. You know, just to be um, you know make sure that we don't get caught short, so to speak. Um, they. Um, you know, yeah, regulation. I've worked in regulated uh, 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 industries and uh, for regulated companies, and you know, it's very nuanced. And you know, it's first of all, it's regional specific usually. So you know, we, we're a US based LLC. So if any regulation comes, you know, it's likely you know that that will affect us. It's likely to be US based. Now, who's going to regulate the industries at the CFTC? We're a prop futures trading group, you know, is it the SEC if we were doing equities? Um, is it the gaming industry? You know, I mean, we, you know, we're funding traders, so that's not us. But those that are putting them into sim payouts, you know, you could argue they're just they're just a casino and that trader's now playing against the house. You know, so would the gaming industry take an interest in those companies? You know, who knows? We don't know. Um, we just want to make sure that, you know, what we do is completely what what we do is what we believe a regulator would see as completely compliant you know so uh, and and you know prop trading where you're actually funding traders has been around you know for i don't know how long but as i said I'm, i was a backs trader in the early 90s and it was way before then that um you know the, the prop trading you know started to exist so it's been around a long 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 time but you know, we are in an era now where it's moved online, you know, and it's retail traders getting involved in it. And, you know, typically regulators um, like to become involved um, if they believe that um, the retail trader at home or the retail investor is, um, you know, out, not outside their comfort, comfort zone, but needs protecting in some way. So, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I just don't have any more insight into it, you know, other than that. You know, like you, we've heard rumors that there's potentially a regulation coming. You know, as I said, it doesn't bother us. Um, in fact, we would welcome it. I think it would clear out a lot of people in the industry and, um, and and reduce the level of competition. It would increase the barriers to entry into the industry. It would become much more difficult to uh, start and run and manage a proprietary trading group because of the, you know, the, the requirements by regulators and the costs involved. So, um, you know, we welcome it, but, you know, I, I don't have any insight as to when it's coming. Yeah, the little thing you know, I'll add to that as well is, you know, I think a lot of this, as you said, it's all rumor, right? It's all, and that rumor and those fears, they're all generated from within the industry as well, right? I, you know, we, you know, genuinely, we haven't had any insight from actually anyone who would really know. We, but, you know, there's lots of stuff within the industry and obviously there's loads of vested interest in the industry. So, a lot of people in this industry have got a lot to fear, right? And that fear just breeds like, you know, worry and then rumor and then concern. And and so, you know, it could just be that, you know, it doesn't happen for a long, long time, right? You know, crypto was around a long time and crypto, there's, you have to be careful what I say, right? But, you know, you would, 
potentially point the finger at crypto before you point it at the, the prop trading industry. And, you know, they're still getting round to it on the crypto side, right? Any kind of regulation, you know, who's remit and, and the regulators are arguing amongst themselves, you know, who should be regulate, regulating it anyway. So, you know, there's, you know, personally, I think there's a lot of fear and rumor as opposed to anything concrete. It almost certainly will come. Is it coming anytime soon? I doubt it is my honest answer to that as well. But, you know, I could be, <laughs> could be uh, very wrong on that as well. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I'm with you. But like you say, it's better to to put yourselves in the position with Trade Day that you would um, assume compliance when those regulations come out and exactly. yeah, position your your business and operations accordingly. Yeah. Um. So a question for for the both of you. I think uh, I I'd appreciate an answer from both of you on this in terms of if you could give one piece of advice to funded traders seeking funding, what would your advice be? Should we start with you, Steve? Yeah, sure. I mean, I kind of touch, you know, I'm from a research background. For, so for me, to coin a phrase from Tony Blair, it's education, 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 right? Kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I don't think, you know, to have that base is so important to understand what you're doing. And I think on top of that, even though my kind of my expertise and what I've earned a living out for the majority of my career has been as a technical analyst, as a, as a research analyst and understanding our charts. Well, and then also, you know, from, from, from when I was very young, having a strong interest in economics and understanding our macroeconomics and fundamentals and earnings and everything else works and geopolitics. I understand all of that. That doesn't mean that, that translates into being a really good trader. Otherwise, the most intelligent people in the world will be the best traders in the world. And that's 100% not the case. You know, James and I on the trading floors have worked with and stood next to some of the best traders in the world who came from super, super humble beginnings and were, you know, not, I would say, not well educated in an academic standpoint. But they had very, very good, whatever you want to call it, market feel, psychology, management of emotions, management of risk, whatever you want, however that you phrase it, there's something else on top of basic education and, and knowledge and wisdom, right? You know, all of knowledge, wisdom and education all helps as the base. But then on top of that, I think, you know, to be able to manage your, you know, we do these mentoring calls and no one wants to talk to me about drawing a trend line or what indicator to use, right? They And even though that's my specialist subject, but then I tell them I'm a counselor. It's just like I'm in the therapy chair or they're in the therapy chair and they want to talk about, you know, sometimes they're talking about their mom or their wife or the kids. But then sometimes it's just about, you know, how, you know, uh, retail traders love a professional trader would never use the phrase go on tilt. right? But the retail guy loves that. Right. Because the professional guy doesn't necessarily well, they do go on tilt every now and then. But, you know, the professional guy doesn't do it because he's a professional trader. Right. And you look at some of the quotes from the real greats in the industry, and it's all about management of the risk. I'll share this little bit with you because I know we've been going for some time now. But the, one of the, the facets of a great trader that I've seen, both from reading books, from quotes, and from seeing next to these people, and when I've been at the banks, to actually being, you know, advising them and being their, 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 their clients, is that most really good traders have these two, these, and James will give you some more insight into this, but. For me, what they have is they're both very, 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 very scared and careful about losing money. You know, Tudor Jones, Paul Tudor Jones has got a quote. There's a quote out there from him saying something like, you know, I aim to end the day at least with what I started the day with, right? So they're very protected. They're conservative. But at the same time, when the opportunity is there and the good trade comes along, I'm not saying they go all in, but they can become very aggressive. And that's very unusual to have that. You know, when you do those bank forms, right, and you fill out, oh, are you risk averse? You know, would you rather, you know, make one pound a year on your ten thousand pounds and keep, make sure your ten thousand safe, or are you willing to go for it and lose half the money, but you might make double your money, right? And most people are either a two or they're an eight, right? Hardly anyone's a five. Well, these guys are both. They're a two and they're an eight, or they're a zero and they're a ten at the same time. And so, you know, if you can have that, you know, that that would, you know, if you can somehow have that within you. Um, then I think that that that's kind of gold dust for a trader. Unfortunately, Forrest, this is like literally my favourite subject. So I've <laughs> talked for hours about it, and I have a lot of opinion on lots of different aspects. But you know, I'll try and keep it brief. Um, I think you know when we deal with what, what I've noticed, this is the first time I've worked on a, with retail traders 
since you know since we launched in 2021 it's the first time prior to that it's always been um you know on the professional trading side or the industry in um institutional side i'm sorry um i would say this don't waste your time looking for answers in charts right and i see way too much focus on technical analysis with retail traders they think oh if i just change this time frame in this chart to this and if i just alter you know this calculation of this type of um um uh, indicator you, you know that kind of little, i've seen a lot of careers wasted by people looking for the answers to trading in charts right and there is a huge huge focus on technical analysis for the retail trader at home. And I don't know where that comes from. Well, I think I know I know where it comes from. One, there's a whole industry trying to sell them daily, you know, the answers, you know, by, based on, you know, buy this indicator and you'll make money trading 90% of the time, which is, you know, complete and utter BS. Um, so there's that. And I think the other thing is, is there is a psychological natural tendency in us, a bias in us, to want to do the easy thing or take the easy path which is, oh, I can, you know, if I if I can figure out the chart, you know, and I can, you know, make sense of the chart, then, you know, it will just print me money, you know, and it just doesn't work like that. Successful traders, you know, have a good, strong understanding of four things. And one of them is technical analysis. But the other one is fundamental analysis. I am shocked, absolutely shocked by the number of people that come on our platform and don't know when non-farm payroll is, cpi is or what the fomc is you know these are the three big major market moving events you know fomc is a you know once every six weeks but non-farm payroll happens on the first friday of every month at the same time cpi is usually the following week you know these are the big news events that drive the price and set the tone for market regardless of what your charts say you know you need to understand when these are at and what their impact is on the market the third pillar is um, risk management. Now, this is probably the most overlooked aspect by retail traders is understanding the importance of risk management. I can't tell you the amount of people that we have funded that have blown that account in one or two days. And it's like, how are you risking 50%, 70% of a trading account in one day? You know, it's just ridiculous. You know, you need to understand risk management better and do a lot of work on risk management and then the final one which i think a lot of people understand is important but don't give it enough weighting and that's the psychology psychology of the trader and the psychology of the market now i think people have been around trading enough now to know oh you know great you know, i've got a book here called mind over markets you know at least hundreds of trading books lying around and um you know and a lot of them talk about the psychology but people don't give it enough time and enough energy and enough way they're not doing enough journaling in the evenings not, you know thinking about their mindset going into the day you know and how their emotions are playing out you know you, you hear a lot of misquotes like oh you need to remove emotion from trading well you know hello you're human you're subject to your emotions you're not a robot you're never going to remove emotion from trading right it's about emotional state management and all that kind of like psychological aspect is deeply deeply important too and you know as i said they're like four pillars of trading and each successful trader i know understands all four now they may weight one of those pillars more they might be really super strong in 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 uh, um, risk management or really super strong in in psychology and not really care about charts or they might be a news flow trader and not really care about charts or it might be a chart trader but i you know what we where's a big misunderstanding is You'll, you'll see people say, well, that trader is really successful and he just trades charts. Well, yeah, he's using the charts to make his trade decisions. He has a super strong risk management platform and a super strong psychological understanding of, you know, of what it takes to be successful as a trader. They might just be, you know, using technical analysis, you know, but they'll also be aware of when FOMC is and, you know, you know, the chart might be saying it's going up, but if, you know, FOMC comes out, you know, if the Fed Fed chair comes out and says, you know, the markets are overcooked, it's going down, you know. So, you, you know, you really have to have an understanding of those four pillars. I think Steve touched on it, you know, like it comes down to education. But, you know, if I leave with one line to sum up one piece of advice, 
You know, don't waste your time looking for the answer in the chart alone. It's you know, it's not going to lie there. You know, there's people have been studying technical analysis for you know, hundreds of years, and, and and nobody yet has come up with a specific system that pays you out ninety percent of the time. That's a very good point. I think if everyone had heard you say that, they would have saved many many years looking. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Lovely. Okay. No, I think that'll uh, be very useful for a lot of um, newbie traders to, to hear that coming from uh, two successful gents such as yourselves. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'm pretty much finished picking your brains. Is there uh, any kind of final final comments on your side before we um, jump off? Yeah, come join Trade Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't say that. Well, I've said it now. Um, I, I, just, I just like to hope that people who have got through to the end of this quite long uh, interview um, do see that, you know, we are genuine, transparent and honest. You know, that's the, that's the thing I just want to get across, you know, come and take a look, you know, that was a bit of a joke, you know, but do come and have a look, just come, you know, it doesn't stay good, you know, it's a free trial, come take a look, don't like what you see, fine, give us some feedback, go, you know, kind of stuff. And, yeah. but I think, you know, we, I, I genuinely believe that we are doing this and coming from the right reasons. You know, let's be honest, we're making money from it as well. You know, we're in it for, it's a business, right? But equally, we're doing it with uh, some kind of, it's not necessarily moralistic standpoint, we're doing it for the right reasons and we're trying to actually be successful of what this industry was initially designed to do and find you know, successful traders in the broader public, right? And we are managing to do that slowly but surely. And we're just trying to provide the tools and just be very open and honest about that's what we're trying to do. It is a business as well. You know, let's not lie. You know, let's not pretend it's not. But then, you know, I, I want people to understand that and take that away if I had to say one thing. And I hope that's not taking away whatever James might want to say as well. No, no. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm going to approach this like last comment slightly differently and just say, you know, just like, this, um, if you're, you're, you're reached the end of this interview, it's a marathon. Um, you know, trading, learning to become a successful trader is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, and I know it's a cliche, but you know, there has been, it appears certainly um, in, in recent years, there has been, you know, this belief that uh, you can swing for the fences, YOLO, and you know, you're going to make a lot of money. And if you're really serious about becoming a successful trader, you know, you have to understand it's skill acquisition, just like any, you know, anything that you'll do in life. If you want to be successful at it, it takes hard work, dedication and time, you know, and it's not going to happen overnight. So just, you know, education, educate yourself, practice journaling and keep going and keep moving forward in small incremental steps, two steps forward, one step back all the time. And, and, and if you come in with those expectations, You'll do a lot better than thinking that trading is uh, an easy way to quick money. Lovely. Perfect summary. Last way to end. Brilliant. Well, thank you for uh, joining me, gents. It's lovely to have you on. And uh, yeah, take care. Thank you, Forrest. Thank you. Forrest, bye.